So in a lot of my recent videos, I've been talking about how the next five years are going to be crazy. And that is true. And there are many reasons for why these next five years will be crazy. A lot of it's due to all the new nodes coming, you know, one after another, going to 7 nanometer, now soon 7 nanometer EUV, then 6, then 5, then 3. It's all coming within five years. All of those nodes and some of it's because of the memory we can stack it 2.5d 3d we have different types of memory we have large caches of on die memory that are being added to some new architectures and of course just 3d stacking in general the ability to stack chips glue them together in different ways but that's not all there's also this new innovation coming that is monolithic dies and not monolithic just in terms of oh it's one die and we're lazy i mean dies of a size we've never seen before the next five years are going to be crazy for multiple reasons and one of them is how big things are about to get i remember when i first saw the die size of v100 volta held up by jensen wang back in 2017 all the way back in 2017 they had an 815 millimeter squared die on the newest 12 nanometer process it was incredibly impressive and actually on a side note that is when i realized amd was just gonna be behind for the next three years there was no way they were coming back at least around the corner but what if we could go bigger what if this is just the canary in the coal mine of one direction we can go in this industry well i give you the new era of wafer scale dies and by the way i did get to see this 4,246,225 4, millimeter square die in person i don't have a picture of it but he held it up i got to see it close up it is impressive god that silicon's shiny by the way let's talk about how interesting this is though the way they did this is by using an entire 16 nanometer wafer or the square portion of it they didn't use the edges because they didn't find it necessary and they overlaid a mesh that made it a single monolithic die maybe not quite and i mean technically right quite as low latency as if it was just one how do I put this traditional die? But it was all on one wafer. They are literally as close as you could physically make them. And the mesh connecting them is substantially faster than anything you see on Intel, AMD, even Infinity Fabric. This is monolithic. I don't know what performance loss you get by not having it literally a traditional one die. But it's as close to zero as you can get. Think single digit performance losses not double digit it is insanely impressive what they managed to do here and in fact the way this works is they overlay the mesh over the defective parts of the die but according to them on 16 nanometer the yields are high enough that it's really not a worry and because there are a on average an equal amount of defective portions per quadrant there's really no latency communication problems there's basically just a few that are defective in each quadrant and by the way that tells you how mature the 16 slash 12 nanometer process is nvidia is making a killing the fact that they even thought to mark up things with super is oh my god guys it's a complete joke the only way a die like this is possible is if the node is almost a hundred percent mature but let's start talking about the implications of mega monolithic dyes. The first thing to talk about is ultra low latency memory at a large enough capacity on die to actually be usable, especially for deep learning. With traditional memory architectures, you're forced to have ever increasing levels of tiers to cache and go back and forth. This wastes jewels of energy and it takes time and you might not think it takes a lot of time but i can assure you it takes a ton of time when you're trying to do five gigahertz operations right when you're trying to do billions of processing a second you can not afford at least not in an ideal world to be going back and forth to all of these tiers having one tier of memory is technically 
the ideal architecture. And this is something Jim Keller talked about before. You know, Raja was much more of a practical person in that interview, talking about on package memory. But technically, if we can, it should all be on die. The performance gains for processes that batch memory between cores quickly is profound. And no matter what you're doing, you're going to save energy. So 46,000 millimeters squared. Let's just call it that big to make the math easy. A thing a lot of people might be overlooking is that you don't necessarily need to make them that big either, right? You could make them 2,875 millimeters squared. Still over three times bigger than V100, than Volta. When you have that kind of a space premium, you might decide, hmm, only half of it will be used for cores. The rest, memory, gigabytes of the fastest theoretical memory you can ever get, saving profound amounts of energy, boosting frame rates, boosting deep learning workloads. This is something that I don't think a lot of people have talked about, the idea of making just substantially bigger dies and then once you do that you realize there's so much more you can put on that die that you just could not afford to do before when you had to you know design around such a constraint is around 600 millimeters squared and they're usually on newer nodes or at least newer relative to how old some nodes we use now are and so you'd go well we're only going to get 75 percent yield so we better make sure that we design this in such a way that if we lose this part of the die the thing still works you don't necessarily necessarily need to do that anymore once you're at 95 percent yields you can just design how could you theoretically do this the best and then maybe we make 16 mega dies per wafer one of them will probably be defective but the other 15 won't some of them will clock higher but they're all good and now they're massive this is a big deal and this is going to continue to become a bigger deal. So in addition to making these profoundly huge dies with all this memory, and even dies three times bigger than Volta with all this memory, I think we need to also start thinking about bigger die sizes without the mesh. This is another benefit that hopefully we'll see in the future. So we were stuck on 28 nanometer for how long, right? I mean... Hi, the, the 7970 came out technically in 2011. It was a paper launch, but they were producing them by then, 2011. And we kept making, yeah, I think Maxwell, yeah, all the way into 2015. I mean, we were stuck on a node for four years, and we're used to one year at most. I mean, really think about how much more often this is going to start to become a problem here for my next point. So we're, we were on 16 nanometer in 2016. It's 2019. That's still most cards. But 7 nanometer should become the standard by the end of next year. Maybe. I don't know. I just heard that Samsung's having problems producing their 7 nanometer EUV. That might hold up NVIDIA. NVIDIA, by the way, as I keep saying, should just do another full 850 millimeter squared 12 nanometer generation, by the way, so they don't get slowed down. But why 850? Right? This is something you have to think about. I know we want to hit our metrics, but what if we can't? This might be a big problem for NVIDIA. Why did they stop at 850? 7 nanometer EUV at Samsung. Let's say that doesn't come out till late 2021 instead of 2020. Well, what if they made the 12 nanometer process go up to 1,000 or 1,200? Now, obviously, at a certain point, it's too big, right? But let's say they went to 1,200. Why not? You don't have to make the dies that big, right? You don't have to. Not at first. You can come to a new node with like 60% yields and just make 300 millimeter squared dies. And then, or perhaps even just make 600 right out of the gate and just almost all your dies are disabled, partially disabled. But if you're stuck to use a node for four years, I think it would behoove you to think ahead. To go, you know, someday, four years from now, we might wish we could have gone a little bigger. We might wish that perhaps the RTX 4000 series, instead of being limited on 12 nanometer to an 850 millimeter squared die, what if it was limited to a 1200 millimeter squared die? 
sound is crazy, but in 2020, that still might be better than whatever you can make on 7 nanometer as long as you go wide and clock it slower. Give it more cash, which NVIDIA keeps doing with every generation, by the way. This is something to think about, that it's not just about the mega dies or the semi-mega dies that I've been talking about and what you can do with those dies, but it's also about we need to start planning ahead for bigger nodes so as we're stuck on them longer, we can continue to get bigger and bigger innovations. I bet Intel wish they would have done that with 14 nanometer, by the way. I bet Intel wishes they could make a 1,000 millimeter square die right now. That's roughly how big AMD said Epic would be if it was monolithic, a thousand millimeter squared. Well, 64 cores versus 28 Intel, but you wish you made it bigger. Now let's be clear here. I'm not saying all of this is easy. You have to make the machinery to have the bigger reticle limit. And of course, Cerebrus had to do countless things to make it possible to make dyes this big, including how they package it and even how they cool it, because if you cool one part of a die, you know, this big in one area the wrong way or unevenly, it will crack the entire die. So this is a lot of effort. I'm not saying it's not a lot of effort, but so is 3D stacking. You know, so are all of these new things. And I think leaving the door open to new options is what makes the next five years crazy. In fact, after that Intel Hot Wings reception thing with Jim Keller and Raja Kadori, on the bus ride back, you know, to the, like the parking lot, they did this weird thing where it was like only a certain amount of people could come. Several engineers I talked to were skeptical of how well this will actually pan out. And I think skeptical for good reason. Cerebrus still won't tell us the clock speed, despite... That slide I showed you that says it's already running customer workloads. Notice they didn't say customers have it or at least are using it as their sta and like as standard server chips yet. And they also didn't stay. Is this running at 1 gigahertz? 100 megahertz? It, it could be less than that. So we don't know. We don't know how well this will pan out. And pretty much everyone on the bus agreed. It's either going to be a spectacular innovation that will just blow everyone away and take market share or it's going to be a spectacular failure so we will have to see and certainly lisa sue doesn't believe in this future uh, certainly back in the 2013-14 time frame you said look something has to change you cannot keep doing just what you were doing before the market was just changing so you can do it you just want to But you know, it's okay that she disagrees. AMD has their own method for doing things and their own solutions they're trying to solve. But really my overall point just is that the next five years are going to be crazy and for multiple reasons, for big die sizes and also for smaller ones, both at AMD and at Intel, who has their own initiatives with 3D stacking and chiplets. They may not be combining multiple core chiplets together in the same way AMD is, but they're certainly trying to do it in their own way. You can use chiplets to stack memory on package. You can use chiplets to have different cores split apart and then an IO die. You can also use chiplets to 3D stack and have Atom cores and Sunny Cove cores in the front like Intel's doing. There are a lot of things you can do with chiplets. There are a lot of things you can do with stacking memory. There are a lot of things you can do with the new process nodes coming down the pipe. But there are also a lot of things you can do with a 46,000 motherfucking millimeter square die, aren't there? Monolithic GPUs have a future, not just an ultra cheap small devices, but also in high performance computing. Just don't get stuck on one way of building things. That's actually another thing Lisa Sue said. If you think you have just one solution to a problem or to everything, one solution is that, you know, one solution is the solution to every problem, then that's the only way you're wrong. And that's true. She's right about that. Monolithic dies of a future and one that could be very big but my next video we'll be talking about the future of 3d stacking and ultra small dies a glued together future not a monolithic one 
Hope you enjoyed this video. It took a lot of effort. Some of that comes from an audio engineer who helps me with my portions of my videos and podcasts. Uh, also with people who help me do research. And of course, the hours it takes to put these videos together. You can tell it's darker at the end of this, can't you, than when I started. Well, so if you think the effort's worth it, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Talk with me on Discord afterwards if you do. And, you know, share my videos, like them, ring the bell button, because sometimes you're just not going to be notified if I make a video. And, of course, as always, thank you. <laughs>